Like, dislike, share, comment, subscribe, or the dog gets it! To set up Pillages the Villages, go to the subreddit, copy the seed. Uh, I'll list the links to everything in the description. So you're copying the number of the seed. Don't forget to put the little minus sign in front, okay? Copy. Now you open up Minecraft, start new world. Call it whatever you want. I'm calling it Pillages the Villages 1 because obviously it's the first session. And I don't want to get confused. Right now it's set to survival as default. Switch it over to hardcore. Now go into the options, hit the control key and the V key at the same time and it'll paste the seed into the box. It's about the only way to do it except hand typing it. There are a number of options as I'm scrolling through to show you. Hit customize, not flat world customize, just customize and hit the customize button. Near the bottom is dungeons and you set your dungeon count to 30 so you have a likelihood of getting more dungeons than are usually generated in a minecraft world you're going to want these for the loot now double check everything make sure your seeds in cheats are off bonus chests are off go back hit the button done button go back and make sure it's set to hardcore and then load the world you're, there's plenty of food around. There's a good village real close by. Uh, there's iron and stuff in the chests. There's a ravine underground. And you're ready to go. That's Pillages the Villages. Okay, so here we go. The seed number is on the subreddit. I'll have a link in the description. So it's time to go tear a village apart. I gotta say I'm really nervous about this because, you know, I don't play in hardcore very often, and when I do, oi oi oi. This is an ultra hardcore that I can actually regen health, but I better not let my health get too low so I don't get deaded. Now it's been a long time since I was in this seat to give you guys a tour, and I. I knew that it wasn't cheating for me to have previewed the world a little because I knew I'd forget it. I'm in so many Minecraft worlds and stuff. Hey, you guys, let me know if your chests come out different than my chest because the person I got the seed from, they had other things on chest. One thing they had was an iron pickaxe. Maybe they were in 1.8 instead of 1.8.1. Anyway, hey. Look at all that armor. I feel so buff and safe and except for a chest plate, I'm pretty good to go. So mostly I'm just gonna dismantle this stuff and I'll be at the village gathering supplies and crafting things because you're not allowed to take the crafting tables with you and you can take a furnace or a Z furnace. I mean, you can craft a stack of furnaces if you want to and keep them in your inventory while you're going. But once you place the furnace down, you're not allowed to pick it up. You're also not allowed to take crafting tables with you. You, you can use the ones in the villages, and that's it. That is it. Running around and hoping to find another village, or am I going to stay pretty close to home? I suspect I'll probably stay pretty close to home because, you know, because that's me, right? Well, who knows? So, plenty of free wood already turned into planks, even. I'm kind of bumbling with my inventory because I'm nervous and self conscious, but that's alright. We'll get there. So, I figured the first thing I'm going to do with that iron was a sword because it's ultra hardcore. Like, I could have done a bucket, but it seemed to me that. A pick and a sword made the most sense because since I'm, it looks like I'm going to go deep fast. I found a ravine and there's going to be lots of iron and it seems to be more efficient if I use diamond and I shouldn't have wasted time on these books. I could have got them later. I have no way to enchant. There was no, I ended up taking them underground with me. It was so silly. There's a chest up here. I should have kept the chest up here, I guess. 
or made a chest down below. I don't know. I just kind of panicked. Like you would do if you were playing UHC and you came across a village, just start grabbing everything that you can use. So that's why I kind of lost my priorities and started grabbing bookshelves. Like I was in UHC. It happens. So I'm going to dismantle this Because villagers won't stay in it. It doesn't have a door on it. It's good materials. Uh, it makes it easier to run over there to use the furnace and whatnot. It's right beside it with a crafting table in it. But the house is one that villagers can live in. I think I might stick around. I think I'd like to uh, play around with things like villager trading. See if I had a bucket I could get that lava. You know? So it's a toss up. Also, remember, you can burn furniture. So if you have less than a stack of something, you can either use the furniture to uh, smelt logs into charcoal uh, the, and the festivals, too. Or you can use it to smelt small amounts of iron and gold and whatnot. Because I'm not going to need that furniture. The builders don't use it. It's just there for decorative. Just to show how clever the builders were in the game when they first came up with villages. I remember we all thought, oh, how cute, they made little chairs and tables, and what a clever idea. And I don't know why I glitched in the door, but that's a thing. Lots of food. I've got, I've got potatoes and carrots and wheat. I've got pigs right outside, all over the place. I'm going to need to find chickens because I'm going to need feathers. I might want to make more books so to do some enchanting. I'd like to do some experimental potion making in this one if I can. If I don't get creeped out and refuse to go to the nether. So all your basic tools. I'm getting plenty of tools because I don't know. It's my first day. I don't know. Those are to slaughter animals. The stone swords. The metal sword is for monsters. So I don't know what's going to happen. I know my first night I'm going to go underground. I don't want to be on the surface. And I don't know what's going to happen. There's not much new to see here. It's basic setup things. I don't know what I was thinking when I did that. Around, yes. Still got plenty of sunlight. So I'm starting to dismantle this guy. It's not like there's no wood around here, because there's a forest all around here. So, I'm just grabbing what I can grab. You know? So yeah, don't craft crafting tables. You can craft furnaces, yes you may. But once you've placed a furnace, you can't pick it up. And how are you going to make another furnace? extra supplies and extra food and extra furnaces and it's all taking up inventory space extra weapons maybe even extra armor depends on how far you're gonna go I would love to find a donkey you know you know how I'm about donkeys anyway or that's another good reason to go to the end is to get an ender chest So if I don't have food made up and ready for me to eat, I'm going to be in sorry shape. 
and of course you get more saturation from cooking potatoes than eating raw ones and same with meat and so on so it makes sense for me to start getting some food together and of course I just got there so things are still just sprouting but remember villagers now farm so that's a big help I found a lot of spots that didn't have food in them I don't know if the or I don't know what happened. I found one farm with potatoes just floating in air. Like it didn't form properly. And potatoes got knocked out of the ground. I don't understand what that was about. Plenty of farms. And it looks like if I don't let the zombies get them, I'll have plenty of villagers. I can't gauge just by eyeball how far away from the village I need to be to help prevent zombie hordes. So I just kind of guesstimated, and I seem to have gotten away with it this time, but I'm not holding my breath. You know, I've got to be real careful. Also, I want to replace some of the doors. The doors are on, that are on the inside of the door threshold will not have to be placed on the outside. That's just the rules. So some of those buildings are going to need extra doors. Because I want a gold. And I don't want to have to tear up the forest looking for pumpkins. And around looking for iron just to make a golem. When golems are next. So you should have plenty of provisions when you start out. I'm not telling you that I'm doing this right. I'm telling you that I'm doing this the way I did this. Okay? See, there's one of those patches. Stuff. I thought that was potatoes, and I accidentally planted potatoes and went, oh, carrots. The rabbits love me. But, you know, breeding rabbits would not be stupid. Now, I can't eat any of those. It would be nice to have because they're instant food right now. But I need them to start growing, and I need the villagers to start harvesting them. I didn't really pick a direction, I just ran away from the villagers and hoped I was far enough and wished I had made charcoal. This is a mistake, this uh, hole I'm digging is under this tree. I can't see around me when I pop my head out of the hole and things can spawn under the tree and I don't have the charcoal and I don't have the coal. So ma mainly I'm digging down because I'm going to want coal. I have a furnace on me, by the way. I'm going to want more iron so I can make a chest piece, buckets, that sort of stuff. And to get away from the villagers. So sorry it's dark, but it's dark. Oh, I'll tell you something I noticed. I thought when I came back up to check if it was daylight, the hole to the outside still looked dark until I got real close to it. And I realized that I wasn't close enough. Track of the time and it was already daylight, but it looked dark. The hole looked dark. So don't count on What I might do is, like I said, there's a ravine down there I'm going to stumble on. What I might do is pick a hole in the roof of the ravine, hope I don't fall down in it to let sunlight in so while I'm down there goofing around mining and whatnot I will know that daylight is coming so I can keep track of my time until I can get a clock. Still haven't found any coal. I also should have checked my F3 and see how deep I am. I'm pretty deep. Well, I'm feeling a little brave because I got all that iron out of that chest. Yes, please let me know what you get in your chest. Now, don't forget, we're posting these videos on Fridays. It's one day, one night. So, a 20-minute video. If you can't make videos, please take screenshots with an F3.
Once you die in this world, the world will be renewed automatically. If you die the first day, you may reset the world. Okay? Nobody dies on the first day. You have to do over for that. Otherwise, if you die, you die. Total up your score. Give us the video or the screenshot. Whoa. Like you can make a screenshot album or something and post a link to it. Use Facebook or whatever for that. Tumblr. Good deep ravine. Now, I recorded two episodes on my first recording session. So, I won't have the benefit of seeing what other people did and what other people found on my second episode. It's okay to learn from other people and if they find something good, you can go there too. In fact, as a courtesy to each other, it might be nice if we if we come across something to give the coordinates, if we can remember to do so, speaking for myself now, so that people know where on the map we found these things. And that would include things like if somebody finds a stronghold, things in the nether, you know, if there's a fortress you come across. At first I felt guilty for using my iron pick, and then I thought, look, this is a ravine, it's full of ores, it's going to take a long time for me to find all the iron that's in here. I took damage from the skeletons, I don't mind. I had to take some risks so I could start building down, I did build a protective wall. But I will take some skeleton damage, but I'm not too worried about it. What I am worried about is that I have a pretty full inventory. I could have left things in a chest at the village instead of bringing everything down. I want that coal. Nice ravine, huh? Don't worry about being a success or a failure. Explore the game and play the game. That's the point. Above all else, Minecraft is a game and it ought to be fun. Challenge yourself. Give yourself challenges. Eventually I'd like to build stairs so I don't use up so much food hopping up and down. Challenge yourself. Definitely do that. But... This is not, oh, I'm not doing a good job compared to so-and-so. No, we're not doing that to each other. And we're not doing that to ourselves. This is a personal best kind of thing. Yes, you can feel proud of the accomplishments you make. Uh, I've given the score information, how you add up your score. It's all in the Reddit. You can be proud of traveling thousands of blocks or riding a minecart thousands of blocks or mining millions of blocks of stone, or whatever it is you do, or, you know, whatever it is you get, be proud of what you're doing. Try to relax and enjoy it, and don't put a lot of pressure on yourself, because in my experience, the more pressure I put on myself, the worse of the game I play, and I don't have fun. This is the first time any of us have ever done this. We don't know how it's going to turn out. It could be an abysmal failure. It could be a really boring video. We could all die on the second day. We don't know what's going to happen. So we're making this up as we go along. It's good practice, though, to play in ultra hardcore, uh, excuse me, in hardcore mode, not ultra, to get used to being as efficient as possible and not overextending your energy and wearing out your saturation so that you get hungry fast. I'm digging poke holes looking for coal. 
I'm really starting to get worried about the fact that I haven't found much coal. I may end up building some kind of a dwelling within sight of the village. Not much in its storage and a bed maybe and not that a bed will matter but no. Actually, you know why? Because it'll make the day fast, uh, pass fast and you won't have a 20 minute cycle. But storage would be good. But within sight of the village so I can come back and use the Use the crafting table for sure. And farm. Breed animals. Have a home base that I can explore from. from. It may be a long walk to the nearest chicken. <laughs> One never knows. My hunger's pretty low, so we'll see what happens next episode. Thanks for watching. Remember, I'd hug you, but my arms don't bend. Bye! Thanks for watching. I'd hug ya, but my arms don't bend. Bye. Kill you. Like, dislike, share, comment, subscribe, and a dog dip it.